What's up, YouTube? This is Drew from Not Too Nerdy. Today's vlog, we're going to be talking about uh, Sony acquiring uh, Gaikai and my thoughts on uh, cloud gaming. So, if you guys haven't heard, uh, Sony actually acquired Gaikai, which is a cloud gaming company, for uh, $380 million. So, essentially, Gaikai was a cloud gaming company uh, founded by David Perry um, in 2008. He was the um, former game designer and creator of Earthworm Jim, if you guys haven't heard of him. And uh, basically, Gaikai is a service that allows users to play uh, high-end PC games on uh, and uh, console games instantly by streaming it from either a web page or internet-connected device. So uh, the thing with Gaikai is that all their games are uh, played server-side, and the user is accessing them um, client-side. So what this means is that you just need a broadband connection, and uh, you can play these different games um, on various different platforms. So they have integration with Facebook. They have integration with EA Origin, uh, YouTube, um, some Samsung smart TVs, and they also showed this technology on uh, Google I.O. playing uh, a game through uh, a Chrome browser without the need for like a plug-in like say Flash or Java using uh, Google uh, native uh, client technology. So the main use of uh, Gaikai is that uh, you can demo full games um, for about 30 minutes and then after you uh, the 30 minutes are over, um, you have the option to actually purchase the full game. And the great thing about that is after you do purchase it, you could, uh, you know, play where you left off. So uh, this the reasons that uh, Sony uh, wants to purchase Gaikai is I think Sony wants to implement the service in uh, the next uh, PlayStation as well as uh, their smart uh, TVs line that they have for uh, um, their TVs. So I think the next PS4 will have this service where um, you can uh, instantly stream uh, game demos and then just like uh, you know Gaikai how it is on uh, any other platform you have the option to purchase this on the PS4 and then be able to continue where you left off in your uh, game demo so also um, I think that uh, Sony wants uh, to have this for their backwards compatibility so instead of spending the money to either port the games over or emulate them they would just stream older games this would allow you to have backward compatibility without the cost of actually having to implement it I think uh, cloud gaming is important because um, I think that companies want to go fully digital the reason for this is that um, they want to maximize profit uh, currently uh, there's a, a certain breakdown for um, retail games and a lot of the uh, profit um, is taken away from you know either publishers or um, companies like Sony who create their own games. So um, you know you have fifteen dollars going to retail. You have about seven dollars that's spent on returns, um, which is basically you know if the product is returned by a consumer, you have uh, this thing called price protection, which is uh, reducing the game price. So like if GameStop wants to reduce the game price, they got chunk out some chains to do that. Um, there's also um, some marketing uh, development costs as well, like for TV ads from the retailers and flyers and store promotions. Um, there's some more chunk of money that's taken out um, for the actual distribution of the physical media. So that's about $4. Um, there's $7 that's spent um, for pla uh, platform royalties. So say, you know, Xbox, PS3, they get paid, uh, say, paid about 7 bucks for that. And also um, the rest of the chunk of the money goes to the publisher, which is about 27 Dollars and then you know out of that depending on what deal the publisher has with the game developer they get about you know 10 to 70 percent depending on what type of contract they have so um, you know this is something that you know Sony wants to maximize their profit by cutting out the middlemen you know aka the retailers and so forth so um, you know not to mention um, there's also you know the used game market they're not making money on and uh, game piracy as well so um, you know, another reason, big reason that cloud gaming is something I think uh, Sony wants to invest in in the future is that um, the hardware cost of actually, you know, developing these uh, next-gen consoles is going to be very expensive. I mean, even last generation were on five-year-old consoles. It was about $600 at launch, and now it's $300. So, you know, technically, you know, they're, they're taking a loss on every one of those consoles. You know, you know, technology does catch up and you know, it gets more advanced and the costs do go down, but, you know, we're looking at the next generation, how much is going to cost to develop a console, you know, so I think for that reason, you know, this might be the last generation of consoles just for the simple fact that it's too expensive to generate these consoles and, um, you know, the graphical leap that um, you're noticing is not that significant as it was from, you know, say, the PlayStation 2 to the PlayStation 3, you know, in terms of, you know, the resolution and so forth, 480p on, you know, 
a PS2 compared to 720 was a big leap, whereas like 720, 1080p, and you know, 60 frames per second, you know, after that, what type of leap will they have in terms of, uh, you know, what people will be able to actually notice with their eyes? And uh, basically, I think the future is that you know, Sony wants to integrate all the all their technology into you know their their uh, smart TVs because I feel like Sony is at, at the um, is a consumer electronics company and they want to sell TVs. So if all that technology is integrated into one, it, they'll be able to reduce costs and maximize profit. So I think the biggest challenge, of course, is that um, broadband speeds for trying to implement this te technology. Um, Currently, uh, most people are are not on uh, broadband connections that be able to actually stream these games. But I think you know by the time the next generation comes after this, after the next generation coming up, like around 2025 and 2030, I think uh, by then I think there will be an influx of cheap broadband as well as um, faster mobile speeds to actually have these soft these services where you can actually stream the game in one location and pick it up on maybe your mobile device or at work, computer or so forth like that. And I think that's the reason, you know, that I think Microsoft is going to be eyeing on OnLive, which is um, Gaikai's direct competitor for cloud gaming. And I think the reason for this is that I think Microsoft wants to, you know, have Windows everywhere. And they want to be your cable box. You already see them implementing all these different technologies um, to try to compete with the cable companies. And I think that uh, Gaikai will be one of them. So, I mean, that's pretty much it. I just want to share my thoughts for about cloud gaming and uh, in the comments, uh, if you guys could share what you guys think about cloud gaming at this uh, recent acquisition. And uh, make sure to check our site, nottoonerdy.com, and uh, follow us on Twitter and uh, like us on Facebook as well. And uh, that's pretty much it. So this is Drew from Not Too Nerdy. I'm out.